All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Trav once again. I'm back with my main man, Paul Workman. It's good. And we talking why the last man, and uh, I'm, we're gonna start calling it why the last season, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> so, well, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, episode eight, ready, aim, fire, and unfortunately. The day before this thing dropped, we got hit with that that bitter news. Um, my, my big hope is because uh, this is a, a, a DC series that right. perhaps will get it over uh, on HBO Max now. But well, um, I don't know. Big, you know, awesome. I sent you the article on like the breakdown of what exactly happened. I don't know if uh, you can mitigate through that a little bit better than I can, and we can get that out the way and then talk about the episode. Yeah, so well, mostly it just seems like it took so long to get off the ground right. that they just don't have patience for it anymore. Like, they weren't they weren't waiting to see what ratings were looking like, and the way that streaming ratings go, it's very weird difficult. and secretive. Yeah, and I guess somewhat difficult, maybe not so much for Hulu, because there is so much ad platform on there, mm -hmm. but netflix hbo max it's literally just that's how you get funding subscription base there's no yeah you know peacock's right. doing the thing paramount's doing it now too where you could pay the lesser the five bucks a month and dealing with ads which is what i do yeah, ads don't do. trigger me as much as some, they don't trigger me enough to pay an extra five bucks and on top of that with peacock the movies don't have ads like uh like the new movies maybe if you go in the right. catalog they have ads but There's like halloween kills didn't have any ads yeah they did uh, like they did like two minutes of ads up front at the beginning yep yeah. yeah so yeah i'm for that five bucks a month did i do it but um yeah yeah uh brain fart what's it called it seems like like you said patience but also i think they said they've already dumped do you remember yeah, how much they, money it was a it, it's it's quite a lot and a lot of money they they gave each episode eight million a piece yeah and, and apparently each episode's been coming in under under budget so that's right. even wilder that that they didn't renew it but apparently well, a, a renewal deadline came up and they were just like uh yeah well even more so the renewal deadline came up for um those two actors um uh, I can't remember which Am two. Amber Tamblin was one of the two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who, one. Of, you know. Obviously, she's the biggest name on the series. Yeah. Uh, being one of the. And I want to say the guy that's playing fans. York, right? I think he might. I have feel been like one those are them. the two big names on the series. And 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 he he was kind of a last minute replacement too, which is really weird. Yeah. I just so I didn't know about this original casting and people walking away. They had the dude from Dunkirk. Yeah. Um as york and then mm -hmm. ben came in yeah. and replaced them but it's so crazy so like for people who don't really know they sign actors for television series to a deal that locks them in for x amount of time and pays them x amount of money right. to get the show going and once mm. that it took like you said so long between the snag with production and then covid their their three-year deal was already up before the show was over and to just to lock in those two it was a little over three million dollars yeah and i guess they just didn't want to fork out three million to lock them in and see if they wanted to renew the show right so that leaves me hope that once the show's done maybe they'll pick it back up and say everybody's yeah. free we can work it out I, I mean essentially they've let a bunch of people off the hook if they can't return we'll see how the season ends and where their characters are right. um but i mean recasting it happened hulu could pick it back up i doubt it at this point but uh as I said, it's a Vertigo series. Uh, DC owns the rights on it, so right. it, it could go over to HBO Max and not cost HBO Max near as much with, with rights. And they could scale back the production budgets. Uh, they already have they already have the Pentagon set, so that's not something that they'll have to worry about. It's just whatever on-location shooting they have to pay for at this point. Yeah, and I, I don't know what HBO Max considers expensive per episode. I don't know what 
shows like Titans and Doom Patrol. I don't know what those budgets are. They really don't yeah. release. I haven't seen anything released on those numbers. And I mean, so I don't know what they're spending per episode. Yeah, but it and sounds. Then- then all the HBO regular series like Succession, which has their third season coming out right. really soon. Uh, it came I out yes- yesterday. It started. Oh, oh, yesterday or two days ago. So, and uh, by the time been, this it would have been out, Sunday, so yeah. that that would have been two days ago. Uh, so I need to jump on that because that show is awesome. I I hear that. I hear that. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But you know, it kind of it kind of kills investment for me when I know that. This is not, it's going to end on a cliffhanger and I'm going to get no comfort from going forward. It, I hate uh, that. I hate that. I'll, I'll slightly get my hopes up and hope that it lands somewhere else. Uh, right. But that, that's, what's going to keep me going through the end of the series that, and I just, I really like the series. So we'll see. Yeah. So, um, as we get into the episode, it's pretty much all about, um, yeah, they don't show Agent, they don't show York. It's really just about Hero and what's yep. going on at uh I always forget the damn save, name of this. Save Max or something save like Max. that. It's something Max. I always remember Max, can never remember the first word. <laughs> so yeah, and I was uh texting you while I was watching it and I was like, God, I fucking hate this chick, dude. I can't Roxanne. stand her. Roxanne, man, and Ah, the chick that plays her does such a oh, Missy good... Piles. Amazing. I'm I'm so happy that I'm so happy that she's on this show. What else have you seen her in? Um she's been in a bunch of things. The thing that I always like um, immediately that comes to mind for me is she's one of the aliens in Galaxy Quest. Oh, okay. Uh, I've never seen Galaxy Quest. Oh, Galaxy Quest is. Amazing. I hear that it's really good. Yeah. Especially since I know you watched a lot of Star Trek recently, uh-huh. you would really, you would really get yeah. a lot from Galaxy. Yeah, because I love Orville. So yeah, it's 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 Orville twenty years earlier and much right. funnier. All right. Okay. Well. Um, if it's much funnier, then I'll definitely hop on it. I feel like she was in the the Stepford Wives remake. Mm. Um, she's she's just in a lot of stuff and like when pressed now my brain shuts down of course because i mean you listen you you edit our podcast you know how much that happens to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know i can't recall anybody anyway so i mean it, it's still a better job than me but um oh yeah especially since she's not even listed on the casting you know what i mean yeah and she's one of the she's one of the parents in the charlie and the chocolate factory remake too oh okay uh with uh johnny yeah yeah did i've seen that movie twice didn't care for it either time so uh I, it's been some years uh, i am looking forward to this new one though with your homeboy from dune so. that's right uh i'm i'm a big fan of the the roll doll book and it's a better adaptation mm-hmm. than willy wonka and the chocolate factory so well, there we go so um yeah you know we're keeping it there we're getting some flashbacks on how pretty much roxanne organized this whole thing and what she does to keep people here i I like that it's done kind of memento style too right yes where we don't start at the beginning of her story we start kind of in the middle of her story right yeah and we go backwards which was really cool and i'll tell you what if i hadn't seen memento i might be confused but (laughs) i can clearly pick up on where they're kind of going with timeline wise it was easy for me to pick up on because if you can understand memento you can understand (laughs) any movie that comes out i promise you (laughs) and let me tell you memento only works in that format because i have a i have a dvd copy that has it in the like straight story Uh not as good yeah oh i can imagine yeah i wouldn't want to see it straightforward it really kills the anxiety of who is it type stuff so but yeah um there's just a lot of stuff going on um uh oh what's it what's uh his name um sam Sam, you know into peeling out and getting into this argument with hero and turning into this thing and you got the the girl the chick with the daughter and you know they're pretty much trying to kick her kick her out yeah they're, they're like nora you're done here <laughs> yeah and it would keep the kid and you get on out and oh it's hard because the kid don't want to go and yeah looking like a shit mom and yeah um 
Yeah, so where do we start on this? Because, man, what an I know. episode. Like, so they're they're doing, like, the, the weekly men are crap circles. Uh-huh, yeah. And uh, having Hero trying to trying to bring up some trauma with Yorick, which isn't going well because she's she's like, well, I mean, he's he's just kind of on my side and I love my brother. They're like, yeah, do you really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're definitely harboring that menace trash thing. And I like I like that they're doing the menace trash thing and then have other people defending like you got opposition from it too because that's her whole bread and butter to keep these women together is men are trash and you don't need them and we're better off right and as you find out in the flashback of course she picks them up from the the women's shelter right and so they're all they're all uh victims of domestic abuse right so it's it's not really a a hard road to go from one to the other uh my son is standing just off screen right now because he wants to tell me something. Uh, let's hear it. Let's hear the thoughts and opinions. Uh, have you been watching Why the Last Man with me? No. No? No. Oh, well, this is a review for Why the Last Man, so. <laughs> <laughs> You'll say hi real quick. Hi. Hey. Come on, come on screen so they can see your adorable curls. Hi. Oh, look at you. Okay, we're, we're, we're new pajamas. That's right, A. Hey, and we're going to talk about that glitter force later on. We'll review that's that right. too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my son, Pat Owen, everyone. That's right. Um, yeah, so it's not a it's not a hard stretch to get these women to to join in with that that mindset. But when you get some outsiders in, it, it becomes a little more difficult. All right, with women who have had very positive relationships with men uh so yeah uh so you get nora who is in a loving relationship with her husband and right uh has a son that she cares for and hero who who does as we've seen has a positive relationship with her brother though it is a very very uh grounded in sibling rivalry almost so uh they're not going for it Right, yeah, and especially again, um, Sam. You know, it's you know she transitioned to he, and he's like, well, this is what I am now, and you know, I I don't understand how you're going for this because they're they're essentially trashing me because yeah. I am a man, and right. you're over here going along with it, and that shit ain't cool, and I don't like it, you know. And they get into a little tiff, and you know, here she comes and. You know, wants to play hero. You know, you can't talk to her like that and make it seem like Sam is uh, just treating hero like trash when that's really not the case. Right. Yeah. Um, But uh, Sam kind of steps in it for himself because of the one girl in the the Amazon group that uh, has kind of shown some feeling for him, but was, of course jumped into fear of showing that feeling uh so he steps in it and says well i mean she's all over me one second and then disappearing on me the next and of course hero was trying to hook up with sam a couple episodes before he's like wait hold on what Mm -hmm. that jealousy oh oh so you want to throw that at me so that starts kind of the wedge between them yeah, um, essentially. Yeah, and of course Roxanne's just standing right off the screen and comes in and is like, oh, oh, you're just gonna just gonna be playing this, huh? So uh yeah, that's oh she's she's something else. She's something else, man. <laughs> and here's the crazy part too, is like I don't know why she's do I don't know if I don't know why she do it. Maybe she likes position of power or whatever. But you know, they go and they dive into her backstory where you know she definitely isn't treated very well by no. men that are higher up than her, right. quote unquote. You know what I mean? Her boss is a complete douche to her. Um, he's letting harassment go at work and right. not and doing anything about it. Her husband left her. She's an assistant manager and she's essentially powerless in that position. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's just everything seemed to be going wrong for her until until this happens. 
So then that brings because the key thing pretty much is Nora blackmails her. She finds this vehicle where, you know, she's killed off some people and, you know, kind of destroy the evidence. But the evidence gets found by Nora. But why does she care so much that she worked at this place? Why does she not want that to come out to the people? Well, that's because she's been telling him that she was a cop for 11 years. Oh, she, okay. Specifically uh, a homicide detective. Right. Uh, and, and that's very important to her every time she brings it up because she's got to she's got to keep repeating those things so that it's it's more part of the lie. Um, and so she's saying, look, I, I was this like voice of authority who knows what you're going through because I've seen how people are treated. Right. And once that veneer kind of comes off, uh, she's not sure how her grasp on them is going to be held because, oh, you told us that you were a homicide detective and you were an assistant manager at a retail store. Right. But it also lets you know exactly how she was able to keep control of this store because she was just living there. Yeah, yeah. She knows this store. Yeah. So. Yeah. What's it called? It was all a very interesting thing. Um, did they, I don't know if I missed it or what, but did they show how she killed these cops? I don't think she did kill the cops. I think she found the cops. Okay. I and think, got rid of the car. Yeah. I, I okay. think that the cops died in that car and that she just. Okay. Gotcha. She just took whatever she could from them and, right. uh, for, you know, took a badge off of them and said she was a cop now. Right. And then, uh, you know, kind of at the end, we get the big reveal. Uh, that you wanted you know what i mean that these are the amazon mm -hmm. woman you yeah. know and this is the group now yeah and she uses that as like the rallying cry of you know they here's these group of women who took care of themselves and didn't take shit from anyone and uh that's who we can be if we just if we just decide to be that yeah yeah stick together yeah. and of course she's like training them how to fire uh, shoot right. guns and uh, Sam's not into that because Sam's the sensitive theater type and that's mm -hmm. another part of the wedge and uh, eventually Sam takes off in the middle of the night uh, and what I found interesting was when Roxanne finds him she says I knew you'd been stealing because he's putting right. supplies into a backpack she tells him I knew you'd been stealing I just didn't know where you were hiding it we come to find out later that Nora is the one who's actually stealing, stealing. and hiding in yeah. a backpack out in the woods. And that's how she ends up coming across the car. Uh, so Sam says, look, just I've taken supplies for a couple of days and I would, I just want to leave. And I'm actually shocked that Roxanne lets him. Yeah. Especially after previously in the episode, she killed somebody, but I, I did turn to my wife and say, you know, it's really bad optics if you kill your one trans actor in the show. Right. So Sam's, Sam's most likely going to be okay for a while. Uh, but I just hope that they uh, somehow go over why she let Sam go. Yeah. Um, Cause it seemed like she got no problem taking out somebody like, again, like I said, we saw previously. I don't know if she was going to kill that person if they didn't run. But, right. you know, they chose to run and she did what she did or whatever. So, right. I don't know. Maybe that's why. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And, and that's that's pretty much the one confusing thing was uh, why, it, why is this one person running? Why did Roxanne choose to shoot her? And uh, well, I'm, I'm assuming she knew she found out the secret, too. Mm -hmm. about her Probably. working at the store in some other fashion she found out some other way i don't know but right. um and that's, that's just what i'm attributing to because i can't imagine what else she could have done for her to go to such extreme measures to make sure she stayed quiet which is probably why sam gets let go because sam doesn't know right sam. so so what exactly is Nora's plan now you know she's pretty much blackmailed her into letting her stay but she's still not happy with how things are run so i feel like there's gonna be something that has to change i mean so she burns down she burns down right. the store 
right uh and in a fit of jealousy and anger and uh uses the store burning down as leverage kind of hey um things are starting to fall apart for you because we hear some of the the women like talking back to her now to roxanne uh she's like uh, i'm essentially really good at optics i'm right. really good at pr uh and i can get these women back on your side like yeah. firmly but that's not going to happen if you don't cop to some of my demands demands being like uh her and her daughter get to eat first and uh she uh doesn't want her talking ill about her husband and son anymore and uh, i forgot what the other demand was but um i i think her plan is just to be safe to have numbers, right, yeah, to have yeah. somewhere to belong uh, I think it'll end up causing some some shifting power dynamics, which I'm interested to see. Uh, probably probably going to end up not seeing this season now. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. So if it doesn't get picked back up, we won't see those power dynamics shifting. Uh, sorry, my dogs are just going crazy right now. Oh, I can't even hear them, so. <laughs> That's good, because they are, I mean, they're not barking. They're just yeah, yeah. circling around. Rustling. They're um, rustling. So that's why I, I'm distracted and staring off to the side every now and then. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I hope we get to see the two of them trying to run this group together very poorly because I think that's a really interesting dynamic. Right. Um, could could have uh, shades of uh, The Walking Dead and how shame and Andrew Lincoln's character were were running in the first couple of seasons because right. that that was an interesting dynamic, um, but we'll we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. All in all, it was a great episode. I'm interested to see where we go next week. I'm assuming we're not going to see any of you know Hero and Roxanne and all of that, obviously. But the next one called Peppers. I'm assuming there's a character with the name Peppers. Maybe um, ah. it's kind of yeah, you know. know. Now I'm not so sure because, you know, you don't seem to uh, respond to that. So what's it called? I, I, I don't I don't know what's going on with Peppers is an interesting name. Uh, it could have something to do specifically in the episode. Could uh, could be anything at this point. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed us too. let us know what your feelings are about getting picked up elsewhere or, you, you know, anything like that. So, uh, Paul, why don't you go ahead and let them know where they're going to find you? All right, we're going to find me on my podcast, the Oscar Worsley Podcast, wherever podcasts are found, unless we aren't wherever podcasts are found. Let us know at Oscar Worsley Pod on Twitter and Instagram or at the Oscar Worsley Podcast on Facebook. Uh, you can follow me personally at Father of the Fear across the platforms of Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Letterboxd, where I keep a running tally of films that I watch. I just went and saw Lamb. That's right, that yeah. Interesting. Jealous. <laughs> you should check that one out. I need someone to talk to about it. It's so weird. <laughs> uh, but that's me. Yeah. And uh, of course, you can find me on the Instagram at ZK Audio, on the Twitter at T R A V I O S Z K, where I'm also on Letterbox, raking, raking, ranking, and reviewing some of my favorite movies. And of course, you can check out the podcast, Level Note with Benjamin Banks, every Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, Stitcher, wherever your podcast is found at. And of course, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter uh tiktok at leveling up banks and uh, you can support us on patreon so paul thanks again for joining me for another week thanks for having uh, me we got two more to go yeah that's Ho right hopefully so, more uh, but two more yeah, for hopefully now. more but uh we're out of here Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Podcast, we got that too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.